Nos tocó Kinder. Sí, <risa> no, es bonito ver a los niños, ¿no? Eh, sí. Es lo más bonito de, de una no, sociedad. Lo que todavía tenemos, ¿no? La inocencia, la... Uh -huh. No se dan cuenta de los problemas que están pasando. <risa> Augusto, sano. How you doing, everybody? Años de tu vida, ¿no? How you doing, everybody? Uh, share, share, people, so we can start. Uh, this is a big conference right here. Uh, so let me hold on for a few more viewers so we can start. And uh, you can understand that we are fighting over here in the north. And unfortunately, we have a citizen from the Ciudad de Mexico that I'm not going to do an interview again with him. Uh, but what he's saying about Ciudad de Mexico is really saddening. He's saying that Ciudad de Mexico doesn't exist anymore. He has been taken over by this invasion of immigrants that they're coming from Central America. And it's horrible what is going on. This is a serious issue, people. We need to wake up and we need to do something other than just be sitting down and just writing on Facebook. Uh, our city and our country is getting invaded. It is already invaded. Your country, your borders are the only ones that are getting invaded. Our country is devastated by this and our president is not doing anything about it. So share people, share so we can start. I'm going to present you guys uh, Hold on a second. I'm going to present you guys Alberto Escurido. Alberto Escurido, he's the leader of an organization that is from, from uh, To Fight for Tijuana that is called 104 Tijuana. And he's, another, he's the leader also of the organization Frontline of Tijuana too. He's the number one that he has put in documents for the president. He's the only one that is putting in also uh, other organizations, but he's the only one from Tijuana that he has been putting uh, documents uh, to uh, the president to get an appointment with the president to talk about this situation in Tijuana and that we haven't heard any response and by that is violating our rights. And also, uh, we are getting invaded in Tijuana, Baja California, but by this uh, lawyers from the left that they're coming and they're not stopping people. So I'm gonna flip the camera right now to talk about to uh, uh, with Alberto, he's going to show us the documents that he has been putting uh, in uh, for the president, and also he is demanding uh, that he get uh, the president get us out of this international pact of immigration before they close our border, and also uh, he's demanding uh, for the destitution of every single one of them that works, and it, it is accountable uh, for. Uh, this uh, invasion that is going to happen. So, uh, I'm going to flip the camera right now, people. And let me put the camera a little bit. Uh, there we go. Alberto, how you doing? This is Alberto Hi. Escurido. He's uh, an accountant. And uh, he's the one in charge and he's the leader of uh, Frontline 41 and he's the leader for 141. He's an organization of people and citizens that uh, they're against this international pact of immigration. First of all, thank you for the space and giving us this interview. Uh, this conference, it was made for the number one purpose to put out that uh, President Donald J. Trump, uh, he made a statement of saying that if Mexico doesn't control this invasion and if Mexico doesn't, doesn't stop this invasion, he is going to close the border, and really, Alberto, I support it. Although it's going to affect us completely, but there's no other way for us to understand that this invasion needs to stop. And the numbers that you're putting out there, and how much they are going to lose every day of entrance, not only here, but in the United States, it's unbelievable. So it's amazing that you brought these documents because it's proof that the citizens of Tijuana are doing something and not only that, that the citizens of Mexico, they don't want this international pact of immigration. I'm gonna show the document right here. And can you elaborate a little bit on this doc document, please? Okay, uh, this document was given to the president when he came uh, to Tijuana to inaugurate the Zona Libre, the free trade uh, on all the border of Mexico. Uh, 
la zona libre o the free trade agreement for the for uh, 30 kilometers or 25 kilometers through the border was to incentive the economy of the of the uh, of the border cities of Mexico, uh, all the border cities, including the south, including the north, all the, the cities from Tijuana to um, uh, Reynosa and all the cities all over to uh, the north and also uh, to Tapachula and the south, okay? But it's uh, illogical to promote act, uh, economic activity when you have a, a pacto migratorio de la UNO, when you bring in all these illegal uh, persons that I'm not saying that all are criminals, but a big percentage and based on document documentation that we have seen here in Tijuana and other cities of Mexico, at least half of them are criminals. When I say criminals, they come violadores, uh, child molesters, child molest well, women molesters and child molesters, rapists, rapists secuestradores, uh, kidnappers. Ki kidnappers, and killers, because they have killed, in, in Chiapas they kill at the beginning of the first uh, intake of uh, migrants, there were two policemen killed when they enter in forcing the border, forcing the border and, and dropping the, the gates, Defense. the fences. And then uh, one month ago in, in, a, in a robbery, they kill another policeman. They have raped a uh, woman in, in, in Chiapas here in Tijuana in December when they uh, two, one, one from Honduras and the other from El Salvador were robbing a girl in her apartment. They rob her, but also rape her. So this is not the best people Mexico and United States can receive. They are sending the worst. And I'm not imitating Donald Trump words. This is, this is the reality. This is the truth. So based on, on what happened in November when the border was shut down in November 25th when uh, 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 una turba, uh, they a try big... To, they tried to rush the border. They, because they were desperate to cross, all they put, they, they got together and tried to get by force. The problem here that I see is that they use kids as a, as a shield to get in. So wh where is... Okay, so, so where is the United Nations? Supposedly, the number one team they defend is kids. Before human rights or anything, the first they think they do is defend kids. How do you explain the United Nations is not doing nothing when you see these migrants bringing kids that, by the way, we don't know if their kids are kids from them because they come with men. They are not, by logic, they are not their parents. So here we're, we're talking about trafficking of people. We're talking about that the United Nations is the pimp of the world. <laughs> it's like a pimp. And they are defending these coyotes and polleros instead of defending the rights of the kids. By the way, in Tijuana in November, when they were take, they took a street and the authorities in Tijuana couldn't act because the United Nations said that the, the, that the pact is not vinculante. Vinculante means that doesn't obligate... Vinculated. Vinculated. That doesn't obligate any government to do whatever they say. But here in Tijuana, we prove that it's vinculante or it's vinculated. vinculated because the authority couldn't act because these ONGs of human rights were intervened and we have document that they, the NAMI, the institution of immigration from Mexico, when the police of Tijuana took 77 people that were breaking the law, they were gonna be deported to their countries. Lawyers of human rights intervened and they take from Inami or the immigration from Mexico from their jails out 77 people. So 
the United Nations is lying. So that's why I'm saying, hey, they are the pimp of the world because they are trafficking people. They are, uh, in this trafficking of people, they, of course, is prostitution. Of course, is trafficking of organs. Is trafficking of of uh, kids. So, what's the agenda? Why they are permitting this? Why Mexico is not acting? And by the way, we give the president. We alert the president on January the 6th when he came to the zona to inaugurate the zona libre in Tijuana and all the border cities of North and South. A, a, a letter that we even went to Mexico City four days later and on January 10th and January 11th went to Palacio Nacional in Ciudad de Mexico where the office of the presidency is to get a uh, sign and, and get a, a number that to prove that we give him a letter asking for a interview with him so we can uh, give the right advice. The problem here in uh, that I see the president has the worst advisors he can he can choose, starting with Marcelo Ebrard. Marcelo Ebrard is the first guy that went to Marrakech in December 10 and December 11 to ratify the, the pact. Without, I don't think he even read the pact because if he read it, he wouldn't accept this invasion because this is not caravans. There's a, I think that United States and Mexico is using the wrong term. The right term is there's no caravans. This is an invasion fabricated by the United Nations to bring problems to the North and to the United States. And by the way, United States is our neighbor and is our uh, partner, we are partners. We have a half a trillion dollars or more of, of in, in, uh, intercambio of uh, <laughs> commerce between both both countries. I think that that the half a trillion was three years ago. Right now, it's over 0. 0.6 trillion dollars. When 80 percent of our transactions worldwide are with the United States, if if we are talking about our neighbor and our, our partner, we have to be good neighbors and listen to each other and, and work together. And Mexico and the president right now doesn't understand our message. Our message as a president of Grupo Cien por Tijuana and as, as a coordinator of Frente Ciudadano Pro Defensa Tijuana that, that was formed last December after the shutdown of the, of the Garita or the, um, the, border. the border, we we created the Frente Ciudadano Pro Defensa Tijuana, F, 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 C, that is front D, line in Tijuana. P, P, D, T, F, C, P, D, T, Frente Ciudadano Pro Defensa Tijuana. We create that with different organizations of, of citizens of Tijuana to defend our rights and our city. And since then, we have taken actions. One of the first actions was this letter. And also, we help the, we back up the police, the federal police, the state police, and the municipal police for, so they can act against these migrants that took uh, the streets, breaking the law. They were living in the streets. They were defecating. They were urinating in the streets, affecting the human rights of the, citizens of Tijuana that live there. Business in that in, in those streets where the migrants were, their business, uh, the, the sales dropped 100%. They were not selling anything. So they were affecting human rights of, of the Mexicans. But the human rights of Mexico, of the state, and nationally, instead of supporting the Mexicans, they were supporting the migrants. How can an institution that lives by the taxes of the Mexicans was uh, in favor or was putting the rights of foreigners on top of the Mexicans. That was intolerable. So that the second action we took is we uh, demanded by in a letter and went and make a, a public uh, manifestation in their, in their offices and we uh, demanded that their, the, the heads of the, of the uh, commissions were taken out. Destitution. Dest, de, we demanded destitution of both the national and the state uh, 
commissioners of human rights. Now, uh, at least we take actions. Then this part, past March 24, we did a manifestation in Glorieta uh, Cuauhtémoc for citizens to come and support us. But it wasn't uh, the, the cures here. El dato curioso, or the the most interesting uh, information here, is that more Americans came to support us than even the citizens of Tijuana. But I believe that now that Trump is uh, amenazando, ¿cómo se dice amenazar? Threatening. Threatening to shut down the border, I think that now the citizens of Tijuana are gonna manifest. That's yeah. why this April 21st, Sunday, April 20, 21st, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we will do another manifestation in Glorieta Coctemo to ask the president what we ask in this letter. In this letter, we ask by decree, presidential decree, take it, uh, take us out of the pack because it's violating our constitution, the Mexican constitution, is violating our human rights and our garantias individuales, our our uh, individual guarantees. Our individual guarantees, and it's against the sovereign soberanía sovereignty sovereignty of Mexico. That's very important because if the Mexicans, the Mexican president can do what the Brazilian president did by decree, take us out of the back. That's the solution. Because this is the numbers. Let's talk about numbers. United States have 800,000, almost a million, 0.8 million cases in judges of asking asylum. So it will take years for 800 cases to see the judges. So they, they, the backlog, the backlog is tremendous in the United States. United States cannot receive more migrants. And Mexico just declared yesterday the La Secretaria de Gobernación, Olga Sánchez Cordero, that Mexico only will regulate the migration, but it will not stop the migration. So in Tijuana and all the border cities, we have 40 border cities with the United States in all the north. All these cities are gonna get uh, uh, inundated with people and we're gonna be a sandwich where Donald Trump will not tolerate and not will accept any migrants to the United States. And the Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, is receiving everybody. So the border cities are gonna get like this, sandwich. My question is here, why the Mexican president in January 6th came with bombos and platillos, with, with parade and everything, announced a free uh, zona libre, a free trade uh, zone, when he's creating these problems. It, it goes like this. You have one day, from one, one way he's promoting in investments, and the other way he's bringing these problems so it's not logic, and the only logic in this behind this is that all these politicians were bought by United Nations and int dark interests of corporate. And I'm not talking about. I don't believe in in the. I think it's a lot of BS, or I will say it, it's a lot of bullshit be behind the conspiracy theories. Let's forget about George Soros. I don't think George Soros has the capacity uh, uh, to to control all this, but he's one of the guys that is giving money to organizations, ONGs, that promote this nonsense of ma believe, migration. Believe, believe. I think that the solution is, instead of promoting the pact to bring more people and migrants to the United States, is to help those Okay, we're on again. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm so, sorry, you guys. It was a low, uh, low connection. By uh, uh, before, before you go, before mm -hmm. you go, uh, this is really important. Uh, two questions. Two yes. questions before I go. Uh, first one: Do you think that our president was bought? First one. Uh, first, first, hold on. And the second one is: 
what is your opinion of all these lawyers that they're coming over here and they're coaching from America? They're coming over here. These organizations like Antifa, BAM, Rapid Response, they're radical and instigators that they're coming over here and they're motivating how to cross illegally to the United States. And basically they own now in Chaparral where they're stationed at. So two questions. Do you think our president is part of this Soros and this left movement from Venezuela and all these socialist movement? And second of all, what do you think about all these lawyers and instigators and organizations from America coming and practicing the law unlawfully in our territory in Mexico? Well, I think any lawyer has the right to do their, their work, but they have to follow the law. They are lawyers. So Mexico doesn't uh, allow uh, that lawyers from other countries come So I'm, I was saying, uh, the laws of Mexico doesn't allow to foreign lawyers come and do their job and, and, and advise foreign people. I think they have to respect the law of Mexico. But in this uh, situation of, of uh, media madness and uh, confusion, there's a window of opportunity that they have had since November of last year. But I think that with the orders of uh, the State Department of the United States, because they, they put the red X and green X. The red X are for arrested people. They are instigators, uh, including the media, including lawyers. They are organiz organizers, instigators, and um, promoters of this nonsense. And also they are interviewing media with the green X that was sent by the by, uh, State Department to get interview and stop this situation. Okay, the the government of the United States is already taking action. Yesterday they announced that they have detained, they arrested nine people, uh, four from uh, Honduras, they are organizers, three from the uh, United States. No, no, no. Okay, I'm not gonna mention names. Three uh, from the United States, three, uh, two uh, from Mexico, one from El Salvador and one from Guatemala. And also, they will interview like more than 10 people, including journalists with their green X to see what's going on. So at least the government of the United States is starting to do something about it. The Mexican government also, in last month, they deported two journalists one from Guadalajara, or two from Guadalajara, and one from Tijuana. So there are some actions taken, and uh, and the the, the the people that are seeing this interview have to understand that you cannot go to another. It's like a Mexican going to your country and trying to violate your laws. Your your government is gonna stop that. The same thing here in Mexico should be done. That if, if lawyers try to 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 advise people. They are not allowed to do it because they are violating the law. So this should be stopped. And the way to stop it is through immigration authorities. The CBP will stop it and the Mexican authorities should do it. Now, the problem here is that last month, the Secretaria de Gobernación, Olga Sanchez Cordero, announced that in, only in February, 76,000 Central Americans go through Mexico to go to the United States, 76,000. So if you add the more than 50,000 in January, 76,000 in February, and now in, in March, it should be another 60, we're talking about over 200,000 people that are trying to cross the United States. That's why all the stations in the United States are loaded with people and they cannot receive. That's why Donald Trump I think Donald Trump likes Mexico. I'm not, I don't think he, he hates Mexico, but I think he has to do his job in defending the United States. And there's a limit of people they can take. So that's why he's uh, amenaza. How do you say amenaza? That's why he's threatening that we'll shut down.
Un alcance de más o menos de 2500. 2500. Okay, uh, before, before I go, uh, Alberto, there's, uh, uh, what is your opinion of our president? Do you think that he is part of this socialist movement? Well, I'm not going to talk about that about Mexican president, but see, the facts talk. If last month 76,000 Central American crossed Mexico to the United States, and in January uh, they crossed over 50,000, we took 50,000. The Mexican government is providing CURP, a number, in identity identifications. They are giving rights, even to vote in Mexico. They are giving uh, alimentation, uh, food, shelter, education. That's what the PAC obligate the countries that signed the CAI ratified, uh, how do you say rectify. rectify the PAC, that they are obligated to give all these uh, things to the migrants because it's human rights. And they have the right to cross the country. And, and, and the last resort is to detain them. One of the, the key facts is that the, the, authority, the, author, the Mexican authority can, cannot do much with these migrants because they are observated by human rights and the United Nations ONGs. So this is nonsense. How a Mexican uh, president is ratifying a treaty so illogical because this is not logical. The thing is that in a country where there's more than 60 million people poor and from those 60 million people, 28 million of those 60 million are in condition of hungry. They don't know if next day we'll have food to eat. That means that if they don't work, they don't have food. So how a country where there's more poor than in those Central American countries on percentage and total population? Because in those Central American countries, I have checked, and no more than 35% of the population is poor in those countries. How in a Mexico, how Mexico that has more violence than those countries is receiving all these criminals to create more violence. It's ridiculous. I think that the Mexico president has to tell those presidents of Central America that, to do their job. And it's their job to solve their problems, not to bring the problems to Mexico and to the United States. I think that they have to solve their problems. And if the people there is coming have the guts to even extorsionar. They, Extortion. They extortioned Donald Trump asking 50,000 to, to cross if they wanted to go back to their countries. That's extortion. So if they had the guts to extortionate even the American president, they should have the guts to defend their country and not come to create problems. Yes. Uh, well, for the last, uh, for everybody to, that uh, is uh, gathering right now and is uh, just joining the feed, this is Alberto Escurido. He's the leader of uh, Frontline for Tijuana and he's the leader of uh, 100 for Tijuana. He has been uh, one of the people that has been uh, putting documents for the president to be uh, to hear us in Tijuana, Baja California. He's been taking documents to uh, the Palacio Nacional, the National Palace, to, uh, for the President AMLO to hear us out. Uh, president AMLO has been denying, denying uh, every single every single letter that we've been putting and that this organization has been putting and not only alberto all these organizations uh from tijuana they've been working to get us out of this international pact of immigration there you have it uh, there you have the name on top licenciado andres manuel lopez obrador presidente de la república de los estados unidos mexicanos present that is his name uh, Alberto, thank you so much. I have to say, I have to say goodbye to the people in America. Last message, well, one, last, one important, last, last one message. important thing okay. to say: this letter was given January 6 and delivered to Palacio Nacional in January 10 and 11. I even uh, write uh, uh, a letter by by hand, where I ask a reunion with the president. This is the day that nobody has 
given me any answer. And this is violated of the Constitution of, the, of Mexico because by law in the, in, in the Constitution, Article 8 obligates any institution, public institutions to answer back a letter in 30 days. This is almost three months and no answer, not by the president, not even by the team of the president. Nobody has answered. So this is violated. The president of Mexico is violating Article 8 of the Constitution Mexicana. Article so, of the Mexican so what else we can do? We even explained with oranges and and and, and, and apples. Ya se lo explicamos. We already explained to the president with oranges and apples, and he doesn't listen or understand. My first demand is he has to fire all his advisors on top. And starting with Marcelo Ebrard, Olga Sanchez Cordero, and Tonatiu Guillén. Tonatiu Guillén is from immigration, Sanchez Cordero is the State Department, and Marcelo Ebrard is uh, foreign relations, the, 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 the Minister of Foreign Relations. Those three guys are not advising correctly the president. And there's a saying in Mexico, cuando eres güey, hasta la coyunta lames. When you're uh, uh, a donkey or a, 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 a When you're a cow, even the, the, the thing that is holding you, you even uh, lick it. So the president knows what is going on. If he continued to lick this, there's no answer. The only thing is he's responsible. Okay, thank you so much, Alberto. Thank you so much. That is Alberto Curido, leader from Frontline Tijuana and leader from 100 from Tijuana. Uh, hold on a second, right here. I'm gonna change the camera right here. How you guys doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News. That was an uh, that was an interview that uh, I just did. Today I'm going to do interviews with people that they are from organizations from Tijuana. Uh, and uh, they are, you know, fighting against this good fight. That we are fighting against our countries. And they were fighting against their countries, and we're fighting for our country and for our sovereignty, people. Uh, later on today, I will see if I can get an interview with a person that is practically the warrior of this Tijuana uh, movement. He's practically the warrior of this, uh, of all these uh, movements that it comes to uh, to the front line. Uh, her name is Elsa Gomez. Probably I will have an interview with her and uh, talk about, you know, how is she handling all these movements. She's the one that does the dirty work. So we are going to have probably an interview with her later on so you guys can know how the, how the groundwork is being handled. How the groundwork is being handled. That is the most important thing. How the groundwork is, it's right now how the shelters are right now how is how this it is really impossible and this it is really an injustice for us as Mexicans and that we're living in this in this invasion people we're living in this invasion that is clearly that is clearly affecting our sovereignty it's affecting the sovereignty of the United States it's affecting the sovereignty of uh, you know our borders and uh, Elsa Gomez is one of the one of the leaders from a group that is called resistance for Tijuana and we're going to have an interview with her so we can talk and she can be viral about what is going on really on the floor, on the dirty work, on the dirty parts. Uh, people, I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News. Stay tuned. We're going to have more news for you. This is a movement. We're going to win. We're going to stop the left. And we are going to do the greatest job to defend our sovereignty, to defend our city, to defend our country, and to defend the sovereignty of our neighbor. Oscar Blue for Border Network News. Uh, uh, peace and love. <laughs> and always, uh, Oscar, send you a direct message to your page, Alfredo Guerrero, calling you out on the live feed. And peace and love, and always your country first. <laughs>